Ladies and gentlemen, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting edition of The Woke, Turning on the Woke. This special episode is brought to you by ESPN. Are you looking to further your indoctrination? Are you looking for a safe space where you can promote lies and propaganda and be rewarded for it? Are you looking to start a bakery and want to learn the perfect recipe for the Pound My Brown Cake? Maybe you're lonely and in need of daily woke hugs from one of our feminine male leaders. If this sounds like you, join us today at the Worldwide Leader and Woke. Give us a call, 800-I-L-V-D-O-N-G. Well, well, well. How long have I been telling you guys this? How long have I been telling you guys that the business, the industry of mythical racism is bankrupt? The sympathy money has run dry. That bank account has been closed. The frauds and professional exploiters, they have all been exposed. People are no longer feeling sorry for you because you supposedly belong to a marginalized group. Those days of relying on your gender and your skin tone to get ahead, those days are over. Back to life, back to reality. Speaking of exploiters, let me introduce you guys to one of the biggest exploiters in the industry. Deacons at Woke United Methodist, they describe this male birthing person as a professional academic. Translation, he accepts grants from the federal government and is a career student. He received his bachelor's degree from Woke U in African American Studies. Where can you get a job with a degree like that? Making minimum wage at five star francs. He received his PhD in propaganda and exploitation from the Woke Temple. He is the founder of the Center for Anti-Racist Research at Boston University. Huh. Um, when I was in college, I think they used to call that creative writing. That was the class where they encouraged you to create and write whatever the hell you wanted. Let your imagination run wild. Today, they're calling it the Center for Anti-Racist Research, where they teach aspiring shit fucks how to create stories of mythical racism. The man responsible for all this failure is the one, the only, Ibram X. Kendi. Well, KC, how dare you disrespect him? Your bias is already showing. My name is Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. Uh, doctor? Doctor. Um, I didn't see any medical school on that resume of failure. What area of medicine are you practicing? If a wanker spanker attends the Butt Bongo Festival, spends all of his money on the grilled woke wiener and neglects to buy Preparation H, are you qualified to sue the bruised caboose doctor? Well, I'm not a medical doctor. I hold a PhD in mythical racism and fantasy. Oh, 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 I see, I see. So what you're really telling me is you're a doofus. Ibram Kendi, he was one of the many beneficiaries of sympathy money during the summer of 2020. I'm sure you guys remember that short period of history. This was when corporate America and the mainstream media were handing out jobs and millions of dollars to people who were not qualified. Do you remember when Spotify gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to Jamel Hill? Or the dozens of times that Bamani Jones was given free opportunities in TV and radio? If you're looking to cure the spread of disease, hire Bamani Jones. You put him on TV and radio, everyone runs away. Ibram Kendi, he was another beneficiary during this short period of sympathy money. People who were feeling guilty for their white privilege, they gave Isaac millions of dollars to fund his research into mythical racism. What did he do with all this money? Did he put the money to good use by fighting the good fight and preaching the good word to combat the mythical racism that he created? Maybe he used the money to help underprivileged kids. Yeah, maybe he built basketball courts in poor neighborhoods. Maybe he handed out scholarships to marginalized students so they could attend college and become indoctrinated. Maybe he hired a staff, gave them competitive salaries and benefits, and assigned them fairy tales to create. The good news is, one of those is true. Ibram did hire a staff. Whether or not he paid them is a different story. Last month, Ibram Kendi, he was forced to lay off over half the staff that worked at the Anti-Racism Center. Why? 
Oh, you know, I'm sure it's the white man's fault. I mean, there's absolutely no way Ibram Kendi could be to blame for this, right? I mean, according to his own logic, there is no such thing as personal accountability. Something goes wrong in his life, blame the white man. The same white man that gave you the funding to start this fairy tale project to begin with. Headline at the Wall Street Journal, how Ibram Kendi broke Boston University. <laughs> According to the Wall Street Journal, this dude is currently being investigated by Boston University. He's being accused of financial mismanagement, dysfunctional leadership, and failure to honor the obligations that were attached to the millions of dollars that he was given. I think the Wall Street Journal's being polite here. I think this is their polite way of saying that Ibram Kendi kept a lot of this money for himself. Huh. I, uh, I feel like we've seen this movie before. If I remember correctly, there was another organization in the industry of mythical racism who received hundreds of millions of dollars from apologizers of white privilege. A large portion of that money went to funding mansions and funding an extravagant lifestyle for the founders of the group. What was that organization called again? Um, I think it was called Black Lives Matter. Since he has a PhD in mythical racism, ESPN, they hired Dr. Kendi to produce a documentary series highlighting mythical racism in sports. Now, I'm sure you guys know about the racism that he's talking about, where athletes are paid millions of dollars to play a game, where athletes are given the opportunity to create generational wealth for their families. When I was growing up, we used to call that opportunity. We called it making it success. Today, they want to call it mythical racism. This documentary, produced by Kendi, consists of five episodes. Five episodes? It took you five episodes to explain this? Let me save everyone some time because I can explain this in about two seconds. It's a myth. The series was titled Skin in the Game. Ibram Kendi, he brought in the heavy hitters for this documentary. I mean, he brought in the A-list race baiters. Carrie Champion. Who? Carrie Champion is so irrelevant, she doesn't even qualify for the upcoming Huge Embarrassing Failure Awards. Scoop Jackson. Now, this guy, he used to be a semi-prominent sports journalist. Today, I hear he's the assistant manager in the janitorial services department at the WNBA dump. They gave him the nickname Scoop because he's one hell of a pooper scooper. Now, what would a documentary on mythical racism be without one of our favorites here on the channel? <laughs> Jamel Hill. Oh, look at that face. This is the face that Jamel Hill made when she found out that she was going to be temporarily employed by participating in this documentary. This is this is also the face that she made when she eventually figured out ESPN's real plan for this documentary was to pretend that it didn't exist. More on that here in just a second. Sunday night, Ibram Kendi, doctor, he released the trailer for this polished turd. He had to release it himself because ESPN damn sure wasn't going to promote it. Watch the trailer for yourself. The intellect that's associated with being great is rarely attached to a black athlete. How dare you tell them how they should play? I am Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. I'm known as a scholar and anti-racist author. If you advocate for black people in the United States, there is a price to pay. Why is that price so high? They want black faces. They don't necessarily want black stories. <laughs> wake up, guys, wake up. I know, I know that was painfully boring, but have you ever seen more blatant propaganda in less than 60 seconds? That dude that looked like a turtle, his name was Howard Bryant. Last year, 4th of July, he wrote an article for ESPN explaining why America was inherently racist on America's birthday. You heard him say in that clip, if you advocate for the black man in America, there's a price to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Howie's actually right here. The price used to be millions of free dollars. You create stories of mythical racism, you're compensated for your creativity. But there was just one small problem, one tiny problem with that strategy. Eventually, America woke up. Eventually, people started to realize that these people were full of shit. Eventually, black people got tired of being told that you're a victim. Black men, black women, they started to realize that 
I'm not your enemy. Your biggest enemies, your biggest threats are people like Howie Bryant and Jamel Hill who try to keep you down by indoctrinating you with a victim mentality. Ibram Kendi, he released that trailer on October 1st, but this documentary, it was actually released on ESPN Plus on September 20th. Why did fake Dr. Kendi wait two full weeks to release the trailer? Why did he wait two weeks to promote this garbage on social media? For starters, no one's watching it. The low viewership of this documentary, it might qualify the fake doctor for the upcoming huge embarrassing failure awards. But number two, Ibram had to promote this documentary by himself because ESPN is refusing to promote it. Why? <laughs> On the same day the documentary was released, Disney CEO Bob Iger, he released a statement that said, we are quieting the noise in the culture war. Translation, being a woke shitfuck is bad for business. Bob Iger, he has essentially mandated that ESPN quiet down the promotion of woke politics. Three years ago, this documentary, it would have been aired on ESPN. Now you gotta remember, this network overly promotes everything. ESPN constantly promotes the WNBA dump. I guarantee you, they have already started promoting the upcoming NBA season. For years now, they have overly promoted mythical racism, but all of a sudden, the promotion of mythical racism has come to a complete halt. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder if the loss of billions of dollars had anything to do with it. I wonder if the loss of millions of cable and satellite subscribers and hundreds of thousands of viewers had anything to do with it. The problem though for ESPN, I think it's too late. Once the Titanic sinks, there is no way to rescue it. Just look at what's happened to CNN. Both ESPN and CNN, they're on the same sinking ship. They hitched their brand to the bruised caboose, they dedicated their lives to the woke faith, and they were blinded by the reality that the woke fungus, the woke fungus is designed to destroy. But give me your thoughts here. Ibram Kendi releases a documentary on mythical racism. Not only does no one watch it, not only does no one care, ESPN refuses to promote it. Instead of showing it on ESPN, they bury the documentary on ESPN+. Now, is this a sign that there is a political shift at ESPN? Is the network trying to re-appeal, recapture normal people? If so, is it too little too late? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate you guys and your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.